Hi, it's Dr. Ken here with you for Practical 3.1 Ohm's Law in AC and DC circuits. In this prac, we're looking at the effect AC and DC has around a resistive circuit. So only a resistive circuit. Uh, don't forget to do your risk assessment. Identify the hazards that you might encounter doing this prac in your laboratory. What supervision level you might need the class of risk, high, low, medium, and then what control measures uh, you're going to put in place to try and mitigate those risks. So here's our circuit. And as you can see, uh, it's simply a series parallel circuit. And we're going to be measuring the current in that circuit using a uh, ammeters. And we're also going to be measuring currents in the branches and we're also going to be measuring some voltage drops uh, across different components, voltages across our resistances, etc. in the network. And we'll just be referring to them as R1 R2 and R3. For our practical here, we're using 27 volts AC and DC, so that some of this will be DC to start with, and then we'll convert to an AC supply to do a comparison. R1 is uh, 14 ohms, R2 is 1500, and R3 is 2200 ohms. So that's the basic schematic that we'll be using for this prac. Here's the uh, circuit setup itself, and I'll just explain the different parts of the circuit. Just get my pen working. Uh, so at the moment we're using a DC power supply, so you can see that's what we we have here a dc power supply uh, you can see it's on about 27 volts and we just to verify that we have a voltmeter across the supply and we have our r1 our r2 And down here is R3. And if you take special note, um, our circuit is simply connected through to R1. Then we come out of R1. We go to the beginning of R2. R2 is then looped in parallel to R3. And you can see then R3, the other side, is looped together. And finally, that's connected through here back to our supply. So that's the physical setup for what we're looking at in this particular prac. So what I've done here is I've calculated the values. I've simply taken um, the resistances and worked out what the R total is. I know what the volts total is, so I've worked out what the current must be mathematically by working out what the R total is. Once having the total current, I was able to work out the voltage drop across R1, subtract that from the total voltage, giving me the voltage, or the, the, uh, yeah, the volts drop across R2 and R3. And I've simply put my calculated values into this particular table. So just to reiterate, reiter, reiterate again, it's hard to say quickly, I've calculated I total in here simply by working out what the R total was. So the R total was simply R2 in parallel with R3 all added to R1. 
and that gives me our total. So once having that, I could work out the I total, and like I said, then work out the voltage drops in each part of the branch. Nice, simple Ohm's law. So we came up with 30, 30 milliamps for the uh, R total. We've got about 10.8 in uh, R2 and about 17.2 in R3. And the voltage drops around the circuit would work out it to be 27 volts across the supply and 0.81 of a volt a drop across R1 and then 26 volts obviously across each of the other two resistors because they're in parallel. So just that's our mathematics of our circuit. So the first thing we need to do is to take some measurements around the circuit and you can see here in the first picture we've simply uh, got the total current and we've measured that in this particular case instead of using the clip-on um, ammeter which I've been using before I decided to use the actual um, current scale or the current mode in my multimeter and you can see I've got 29.5 amps on the meter so I've put that into the table then I've put the meter into R2 got 12.6 and then put the meter into R3 and we got 17.5 so there are our current readings around our circuit and you can see the three pictures of those current readings being taken there then I've repeated the process again but this time instead of using the current mode I've switched my multimeter to volts and measured the voltage around the circuit so about 27.3 volts across the circuit across R1 we had about 1.087 of a volt and then across R3 as you can see and R2 because they're in parallel we got 26.3 volts so there's our three sets of readings now we repeat the whole process again but you can see this time I've now changed to an AC power supply so you can see here we've now changed to power supply to AC and uh, this is roughly a 24 volts odd power supply and we've taken our current reading for the total we've taken a current reading for the um, current in R2 and the current reading in R3. So we've got uh, 29 milliamps in R1, 12 in R2 and 17 in R3. So next step is to add to that our voltage readings and again you can see 27 volts across the supply 1.16 across R1 and 26.45 across R2 and R3. So that's our full set of readings. What we've done is we've calculated what those currents and voltages should be. We've looked at a DC supply through the network and got our readings for both current and voltage. And we've also done it using AC. So the last step here is now to do a comparison and I'll just screen, turn my screen pointer back on my pen and let's look at this first column down through in this direction and see if we can see any marked differences or changes here and you can see we estimated our um, I total at uh, 30 milliamps we actually red 30 milliamps and the I total in the AC was 30 milliamps of course that has to be uh, mirror imaged through R1 because it's in series and again we got 30 milliamps through R1 we got 29.5 so close to 30 it doesn't matter and again in the AC we also got the same amount of current so it didn't matter whether we're using AC or DC for this resistor network our total current 
was the same. If we look now at the next column, you can see some great similarities again. Um, 10.8 or 11 milliamps in uh, I2 was what was going to be calculated. What actually happened was a 1 milliamp more, close enough allowing for the inaccuracies of our meters. So 12 milliamps and 12 milliamps. So again, it didn't matter whether it was an AC or DC in this resistive circuit. We got the same values. And finally, of course, through our current through resistor 3, we got we estimated 17 milliamps and we pretty well got what we estimated at 17.56 for DC and 17.56 for AC. Again, demonstrating that in resistive circuits, whether they're AC or DC, we can treat them as pure Ohm's law circuits. Then looking at our voltages, and again, our voltage is pretty consistent, obviously, all the way through at uh, 27 volts for each, or very close to it. And also our voltage across R1, we estimated it would be um, 0.81, and it came in at 1 volt. So again, very close, allowing for the differences in um, instrument measurement accuracies. And then our voltages across R2 and R3, again, all pretty well, very close to the same. So to compare our results, we can simply say that AC or DC in a resistive circuit makes no difference. You're going to get very similar values because resistors don't cause any shifts between voltage and current and they're effectively what we would call simple Ohm's Law circuits. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, Practical 3.1. Again, when you do this practical, you'll probably use slightly different values of resistors and voltage supplies. So I hope you've enjoyed this little indicator of how you might go about doing Practical 3.1.